Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm talking about this real life UI element thing that I made. Uh, and we're not doing the entire thing because that would take like an hour, if not like two hours. Uh, but I want to talk about one element of this being the 3D gizmo that is related to this 3D gizmo up here. Uh, because it's not immediately obvious how to make that. And uh, you can put letters inside of it so it's always facing the camera and fancy materials, etc, etc. Don't need to save this. So, uh, I'll show you how to make the gizmo, and if you guys are interested, maybe I'll show you guys how to make the rest of the shot. So, uh, to make the gizmo, you can see this thing, and it's great that we have reference here, we don't need to load in any image, it's always going to be here. Uh, you can see this thing has three kind of legs to it, and six spheres, uh, which have kind of different uh, materials going on. Like, some of these have a uh, outline, some of them don't. I say we start off with the modeling. So I'm going to add in a cylinder. This is going to be one of the legs. So I'm going to make it super, super thin, something like that. Move it up one unit on the Z axis. And there we go. We have one of the legs. Uh, to make more copies, I'm going to make this uh, relative to the 3D cursor, the pivot point. This is because now when I make a duplicate and I rotate it, it's rotating from the uh, center point, which is what we want. So I'm just going to rotate it until it's in position, make another copy, rotate it again. And uh, we have the uh, three legs. Uh, now all we need to do is add six spheres. And I know that we're making this in 3D, uh, but we're eventually going to, in the materials, make it flat shaded is the idea. Uh, so just kind of make a sphere that roughly looks like it's the right size and then bring it up two units, make a copy, bring it down four units because we need to bring it down two and then another negative two. Um, and I think a fancy way we can do the rest of these is we can duplicate both and then rotate them together uh, like that on the x-axis and then on the z-axis. And uh, there we go. That's actually all the modeling we need to do. I'd also recommend taking these spheres and making them by the way, I realize I'm being super formal. Yo, guys, another Blender tutorial. Uh, let's make them shade smooth, um, is what I was going to say. Um, and that's the modeling. Now all we have to do, we actually don't need a light since we're going to flat shade everything, uh, is make the material. So let's go to shading. So let's think about what we need here. Uh, we need kind of like, kind of three materials, like a blue one, a green one, and a red one. Uh, but there's a bit more going on here, like we have these outlines, etc. Uh, so let's start off just with the three materials. So we can start off with a blue material, and that can be super easy. Again, we're just flat shading it. So I'm just going to connect an RGB with kind of the, it's not like direct blue, it's kind of this teal kind of color. And you just want to roughly find what color makes sense there. I think something like this. Um, and then uh, select all the other objects that should be blue, uh, shift click the one that is already blue, control L to link the materials. That's just a quick trick on how to do that. Um, next, we do the red. So I'm going to make a copy of this material, call it red, pivot the color to this kind of somewhat intense red, something like that. We can always adjust this later. Again, uh, click both of these, shift click, control L, link materials. And then finally, we're going to make a third copy. I'm going to call it Grin. <laughs> and uh, this one is going to be kind of, it's kind of like a yellowish green that's a bit dark, it seems like, something like that. And I'm going to click these, control L, link materials. And we're almost done. You can see it's flat shaded. Uh, I want to make these kind of outline materials where it's transparent uh, in the middle. So uh, starting off with the green, uh, we're going to make a variation of this material. So we're going to call this green hollow. And here's how we get the outline. Because this is a sphere, when we look at the Fresnel, uh, you can see it kind of does this outline effect because this is the part of the surface that's facing away from the camera. And that's what Fresnel shows. It shows the view angle. Uh, point is, you send this through a greater than node, and then we can kind of control the outline size. I'm now going to take this, send it through a mix shader, and we want uh, the outline, the uh, white part, to be green. So that's going to be in the second socket. 
And then in the first socket, we want it to be this kind of transparent thing. So I'm going to make it transparent, copy the color green in here, and let's see what this looks like. Well, it's black in the middle because we're using EV right now. So make sure you have alpha blend in the material. And this transparent green uh, needs to be, the closer it is to white, the more transparent it is. So, oh, by the way, we can also use the Fresnel right here to control the size of it. So something like that looks pretty good to me. Um, and now we just got to copy this for the other one. So we'll do it quickly. Uh, we're just going to use the green hollow material, but now we're going to call it red hollow. And at this point, all we need to do is change the colors. So change this color, change that color to this kind of very pinkish, whitish red. Um, and then for blue, we again copy the material. And we're going to call it blue hollow. And we're going to make it kind of a bluish. Copy the color and make it very bright. And now you can see that from any uh, viewing angle, this does the right thing. The intersections where this blue line goes over the green um, makes sense. Um, and everything kind of makes sense. If anything, uh, the only error here is maybe the, the, uh, this one should be flipped. And uh, if, we want, if you just look at the reference here, that seems to be the case. Um, if you want to do that, it's super simple. We just take these. Uh, rotate them by 180 degrees. Then we take, whoops, I'm trying to select that one, yeah, and rotate it by 180 degrees. And now we got something that I think makes more sense. Okay. Um, now, uh, kind of the more complicated part is how do we put these like X, Y, and Z letters inside the sphere? They need to be inside and they still need to be visible. Right, because if I just add in a text object and then I'm going to edit the text, so it just says the letter X. And I'm thinking, uh, let's pick a nice font for this too that kind of looks like this font. Uh, you could actually look up what font they use in the UI, uh, but I'm just going to use Aleph Bold because I find that that looks pretty good. So for this X, I want to put it inside the red sphere, so I'm just kind of positioning it. And we want it to always be facing the camera. So you can see this X, Y, and Z, it's always facing the camera. Uh, to do that, we add in a constraint. We track it to our camera. And instead of negative Z, make it Z. And let's see, is it centered? There we go. So you can see now it's always going to uh, face the camera. So if I move my camera, it's always in the correct position. Um, however, uh, we can't see it because it's inside our sphere, which is kind of an issue. Uh, so first of all, let's give this thing a material. I'm just going to give it a black material, so connect nothing to the surface. So when we hide this, you can see we have our X, uh, but we need it to be kind of overlaid on top. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, first of all, I'm going to select our X inside of here, make a copy, go to edit mode and type in Z. And let's just make sure that it's inside our sphere. And again, you can go into the font, edit it, make it look better. I'm just roughly doing it here. And then we also need the letter Y. So edit mode, type in Y, make sure it's inside our sphere. There we go. Uh, so now from the camera's perspective, if we select uh, X, Y, and Z, you can see it's always uh, inside of our sphere. Uh, X needs to be repositioned a little, it seems. Or we need to like um, move our origins. Yeah, so now they're centered. So I'm just going to move them up a little. And now with a bit of tweaking, they should always be inside our spheres. But again, we need them overlaid on top. So here's the trick of... Uh, how to do that. I'm going to select all these text objects, click M to put them in a new collection. I'm going to call this the text collection. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to put this in a different view layer, a different like render layer, uh, so that we render two different passes. Okay. So our first collection is stuff. 
Our second collection is uh, the text. So we can make our first render layer main. Now we make a new render layer and we can call this one text. And we want it so that the main render layer renders the stuff and not the text and vice versa for the other. So for the first render layer where we just want stuff, hit E on text, that will disable this uh, group. So text is not even in here. Swap to the other one, disable stuff. So now you can see there's just the text. And now if we were to render this, and I'm gonna use a film, transparent. If we were to render this, it's actually gonna render two times so that when we go to our compositing, you can see we have our render layers node uh, with both the main and the text, okay? And now the trick here that we can do in compositing is uh, we can take these and overlay them on top of each other using an alpha over, and now one is on top of the other, right? We, we literally just took this and overlaid this on top. Uh, so that it looks like that. And again, you can always go in and modify your text. I was a bit lazy about it, uh, but that's how you do it. So now let's say we go to a different perspective. Um, so I'm going to go to our main layer uh, with our camera, make it camera to view, rotate the camera, render, no matter what, it's going to work from any perspective. Again, you do want to center your text. Um, and you could get a bit fancy here, like uh, let's add in a bit of an outline. So first of all, I'm going to put this on top of a background. So let's put it over like kind of a dark gray. That looks pretty good. Uh, to give this thing an outline, I'm just going to extract the alpha channel. That basically tells us where does this exist. Uh, there's a bit of a discrepance, discrepancy. That's a hard word to say, discrepancy. 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 Wow. Wow, that's just not in my wheelhouse, is it? <laughs> uh, there's a bit of a discrepancy. Fuck. <laughs> the transparency in the middle of these spheres is not exactly like zero or one. Uh, so what I'm going to do, discrepancy. Why is it so hard? I'm going to send it through a greater than node. Uh, so it just kind of shows, you know, where we have this. Send this through a dilate node. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm adding a bit of an outline. So I'm adding a feather of 15 to grow this. And then I'm gonna subtract away the original. So this just gives us an outline. And now what we can do is instead of just the um, background, we could add black on top of this, using this as a factor, this as a background, and boom. Now this thing has a nice outline and you can make that outline any color. Like we can make it white, kind of this like select orange, uh, which you might like the look of. And again, that works from any perspective. So uh, there you go. That's how you make a gizmo. And uh, that's the end. Wow, car outside's going wild right at the end of the tutorial. Uh, that's the end of that. Um, as always, at the end of these, I like to pimp the ever living speeding car um, out of my Patreon. Uh, there are three benefits you get when you join Patreon, link in the description. First of all, uh, you get early access to tutorials. Did you want to see this tutorial a day early or some of my tutorials a day early? Uh, join Patreon. Do you want to get the blend um, specifically, uh, specifically for uh, the kind of this project? that I've been hinting at. Uh, you can get the blend file for the entire thing, see how that works. And then uh, thirdly, early access to tutorials that is there as well. Uh, so if you're interested, Patreon, link in the description, even a dollar is super meaningful. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I will see you on the next one.